In early April, I began to warn about the damage extended lockdowns would have on America. And since then, we've experienced millions of job losses, added trillions to our debt, and experienced terrible riots. But one of the first things that happened, and the worst things that happened, was how much learning was lost by our kids by being locked out of their classrooms. So with the Trump recovery fully underway, Democrats are shifting back to their default position. Shut the economy down. Yes, that's where they are now. And that includes, of course, our schools. Now, they cite the rising COVID infection rates in certain states to sell their latest panic porn. The United States in free fall from the coronavirus, a top infectious disease doctor is warning today. And right now, as we speak, the number of daily cases is double what it was just a month ago. Take that in double what it was just a month ago. What about the mortality rate? Well, when people say follow the science, take it with a grain of salt, because science by its very nature is always evolving as our understanding of the world around us improves. Now, despite this, it's never difficult to find an expert who will try to scare you into giving up your freedom. In some of these states where the number of cases is in the thousands per day, it's absolutely impossible to do contact tracing and isolation and quarantine at those numbers. In those areas, you're going to have to be moving back to everyone shelter in place, everyone stay home if you really want to get this under control. <laughs> Did you hear it? Going back to shelter in place. Now, you sense, don't you, that this is where the Democrats are going to be heading and that President Trump, he, they're going to say, is endangering America by insisting that we stay open. In other words, we must close down for the national good. Now, this is a scorched earth approach to this virus and one that we already know doesn't really work. Now, most states did issue stay at home orders with only essential businesses open. Well, and guess what we discovered? The virus is still out there when people start moving about again. Well, yes, people get sick. Some will tragically die, especially those who are vulnerable. People who are elderly struggle with diabetes or autoimmune disorders, maybe cancer, or have a high BMI. They're all vulnerable. But thankfully, the overwhelming majority of people will tolerate this virus. And some have adaptive or innate immunity, and thus they won't even get sick or sometimes even test positive when they're exposed. Now, as for kids under the age of 18, where are they? They basically have a 0% chance of becoming seriously ill or dying from this virus, again, unless they're in one of those special categories. But pay no attention to actual facts. Liberal school superintendents and blue state governors are, of course, opting toward keeping schools closed as long as possible. I will not yeah. reopen yeah. our school system August 24th. If the conditions are what they are today, our reopening plan contemplates a phase two reality. We are still in phase one, a phase mm -hmm. one that has degraded uh, since uh, as over the past few weeks. Well, they talk about what is reckless, like opening is reckless. Well, stealing face-to-face -face education, that's reckless. In Miami-Dade, about 60% of parents prefer the in-school model. 30% say it's okay to go virtual. Now, siding with parents who see the enormous long-term damage many children face without regular in-school instruction, President Trump sided with worried mothers and fathers today. We want to reopen the schools. Uh, everybody wants it. The moms want it. The dads want it. The kids want it. It's time to do it. We don't want people to make political statements or do it for political reasons. They think it's going to be good for them politically, so they keep the schools closed. But rather than focus on addressing the brain drain that occurred last semester for hundreds of thousands of kids in Virginia, liberal governor Ralph Northam is addressing really, really important issues. In a letter to the heads of school boards in the state yesterday, he says some names and mascots have a, quote, traumatizing impact on students families, teachers, and staff. Traumatizing impact? How about not going to school for a traumatizing impact, Ralph? Empty gestures from the guy still trying to recover from that infamous costume party photo. You bet. 
Now, in Virginia's liberal Fairfax County, left-wing officials just announced that parents would have two options in the fall. One, they could go two days a week in school for their kids, or number two, four days a week of virtual instruction. Okay, two days in school or four days virtual. By the way, there's zero ability to switch once you've made the choice by next week's deadline. So what are parents who work outside the home, what are they supposed to do? We have always had networks informally, and now more than ever, we need our community to wrap around families. So I really hope that we can have our communities of faith and our nonprofits uh, find ways to help support these families in greater amounts than we've ever done before. Now that, that Scott Bray brand is a real piece of work. Let's get this straight. It's too dangerous for kids to congregate in class and learn and interact with each other, but it's okay for them to congregate in church basements? What? Now, as usual, if you're looking for culprits in the schools regarding their lame bias curricula or waffling on the question of reopening, the road always leads back to the Democrats' fiercest, most loyal donors, the teachers' unions. Tina Williams, head of the Fairfax County Federation of Teachers, said, we all want kids back in school as quickly as possible, but that also means as safe as possible. Okay, well, if that were the case, you wouldn't have sent them to school during what even Anthony Fauci called a terrible flu season for 2019 and 2020. Then there's Kimberly Adams, president of the Fairfax Education Association. She says, a vaccination or a widely available treatment for COVID-19 is necessary before a full return to in-person instruction. Hey, newsflash, <laughs> again, Anthony Fauci has to admit, we might not ever have a vaccine. So should kids just be kept out of school forever? This is ludicrous. Tonight, the vice president called the unions out. When we hear some word about uh, teachers' unions beginning already to say that they're not going to be willing to come back in some jurisdictions around the country, look, we, we all ought to be working together on this. Yeah, well, fat chance. In New York, where infections and hospitalizations are declining, Governor Andrew Cuomo still has parents and students in total limbo. We have some time. This is a very fluid situation. When we get the data, we will make a decision. In the meantime, I'm telling all school districts to come up with a reopening plan. But we don't yet know if we are going to reopen. Uh, this, is, this is unbelievable. This is like child abuse at some point. From a medical and a common sense standpoint, the decision to put kids back in school should be a slam dunk yes. But since Joe Biden is bought and paid for by the teachers unions, he's just going to rubber stamp whatever they decide. A Biden campaign official tells Fox News, we need to ensure we can do it safely in line with the recommendations of public health experts. Translation, the unions want more money. We need the money for PPE. We need the money for um, extra teachers. We need the money for extra cleaning and extra buses. Um, but my members really want to be with their kids. They just want it to be safe for both kids and for themselves. Does anyone buy anything that woman says? Is that all the taxpayers will be funding, by the way, disinfectants and cleaning crews? And how do we know that that money will really be enough? What if we spend all that money and the teachers union insists on waiting for a vaccine? Again, the schools could be shut down for years. And that brings us back to the big question. Are these schools gonna reopen at all in many communities across the country? At least for now in Donald Trump, we have a president who's putting parents and their children first. But that could change in November. A vote for Biden puts teachers unions first and as a vote for more shutdowns, government edicts, and controls. And that's the angle.